Hello, and I'm Joy Fay, And I'm Eve Marie Whitson Jones. And great that you're here for our podcast. And um, today we've got an interesting subject about, I think, you know, it's a subject that we we will all identify with, and it's how we evolve as an artist, mm. you know, our different stages of um, progression um, from, you know, very, very first starting and, uh, and as we develop. So uh, how do you feel about that, <laughs> Eve? <laughs> um, I think I'm, I'm a toddler <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the path to evolution, but uh, yes, definitely there's, um, there's an interesting uh, progression, isn't there, as one begins and then starts to explore. Um, and you've had an interesting uh, path as well, haven't you, from where you started? Oh, for sure. Yes. I mean, it's developed and developed. And, you know, when you when you look at various artists and to see how they've grown and how they've changed and how they can bring more of their life into uh, their art. I mean, the the, the artist that springs to mind is um, uh, Kandinsky. Mm hmm. Um, because when he first started off, he was doing, you know, landscapes. And then he was doing really colourful landscapes. And it was so interesting, so interesting with him as he changed countries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because he spent, you know, his early years, obviously, in Russia, and then he moved to Germany. And then how how his work evolved and changed and the thing that came to my mind when you know when we were talking about the subject is not only do we change in years I think we change in seasons yeah <laughs> so you know all of a sudden now um here in Spain it's been really a very 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 hot summer and practically overnight it's changed to winter Yes, same here. It's gone from, you know, wearing a T-shirt and having windows open and, you know, day and night. Suddenly it's sort of pouring with rain. It's freezing cold. Yes, <laughs> yes. You know, I've got to sort of scramble around to try and find a jumper to wear. Yeah, me too. And I think I think the mode, the change in 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 that environment in our own environment in the seasons obviously has an effect on how we paint <laughs> yes and yes. um you know last in the last podcast we were talking about seeing color mm -hmm. and you know when the skies are gray and it's miserable obviously there's a complete change in color <laughs> and the rain so, the rain brings uh, colors out as well doesn't it when everything is uh, good, there's a bigger contrast absolutely yeah. yeah yeah so you know i feel that the more we're aware of those changes not just as progressing as artists but our environment as artists mm. and those changes in the season, you know, um, has an interesting effect on our work. And I think it's kind of, it, it's a good thing to observe those things, to uh, recognize them in ourselves and in our work. And, you know, what we might do in midsummer and how we feel on a beautiful sunny day when, you know, the birds are singing and yeah. there's beautiful mm -hmm. shadows and reflections and light to, you know, the depths of winter where, you know, it's cold and it's dark and, <laughs> you know, you might have a lot of snow outside. Um, and that is a fantastic for colour, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was with a friend yesterday and she's from Norway and she's got a house here in Spain. And she said, you know, she'd spoken to her, her daughter um, at home and it was like two feet in snow. Already? Oh my <laughs> yeah, God. Already. Oh my gosh. Wow. Um, and they get the, the, she's going back, I think, just before Christmas. So she said, you know, the contrast is massive. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, although it's raining and it's dull here, we're certainly not two feet in snow. No, and, and never no. will be. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
but I feel it's kind of interesting to observe those changes and the changes that we have in our in in, in our painting in relationship to that and our different inspirations in those times yeah you know um and our influences so um and we draw on those that inspiration i think but you know going back to first starting i always find it's interesting going back to you know even paintings from a year ago let alone two or three or five or 10 or 20 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> you know, and, and as I think we develop our skills and our understanding, you know, every, it, it all changes and it's like our life, really. I mean, that's one of the great things, I think, that, you know, you put to me, there's very little distinction between art and life and life and art. <laughs> well, it's true. Yeah, definitely. Your art is a reflection of who you were, how you felt, the way you saw yourself, the way you saw the world at that moment mm. in time. And now it, now you're a whole different person. I mean, even physically, you know, it's possible oh, yeah. that every cell in your body <laughs> is not the same um, set of cells that you had back when you painted no. that, that, that image, that painting. So yeah, you are a whole um, different person. There's, there's a lot more cells. <laughs> yeah, there's there a lot then. more, could be a lot less, you know, depending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and then you know I think to explore the changes to be interested in the changes. So you know first of all if we kind of observe them and then recognize them and see how those changes affect us and explore and experiment with them you know even you know like I was saying about clothes mm -hmm. uh, what we're wearing changes and you know what we wear reflects our personality and how we feel yeah so you know when we go from um, you know t-shirts and light clothes and pretty summer dresses and stuff to jumpers and scarves and vests and hats and gloves it again has a different effect on us well i think it's interesting you you i get the feeling when you when you talk about changing into wearing jumpers and scarves that there's an kind of not a wonderful feeling about it for you but i actually like this moment where you are kind of getting into that cozy atmosphere of wearing yeah something like a knitted um, um, jumper that, you know, maybe has some sentimental value or or it just feels so nice and warm and cozy and maybe you've got the fire on. And so there is a different atmosphere. It's not, and, and I think in some ways for me, at least it is conducive to doing things, to being artistic and creative. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, I, I I like it because really, I guess, the summer clothes, you can't be as expressive. You know, you can't wear layers of different yeah. colours and have yeah. lovely scarves on and, you know, nice coats and stuff. True. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you, right. you just you want the less clothes, the better. Well, yeah. certainly here in Spain, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you'd walk around naked if you could because it's so hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's a bit of a frightening thought. But in any <laughs> case, um, I, I, yeah, I think when we can wear other clothes and be creative with how we're dressing. Um, I mean, I have a passion for scarves. I've got more scarves than I've got anything else. Yeah, me too. I um, love scarves. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you can have the same old jumper, but you can have lots of different, lovely, um, different color scarves to, to go with it, you know, dependent on your mood. Right. So yeah. all that kind of has an effect Mm -hmm. on our artistry really yes. doesn't it yes you become and, more um, of a palette you 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 yeah. transform into a, uh, your own palette in a way yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean you know I, I love experimenting with clothes you know I don't I, I don't buy a lot of new clothes the only thing I buy is scarves usually because <laughs> <laughs> you know a jumper's a jumper whatever color it might be um 
And I think you can be sort of quite inventive and exciting with that. So if you were to think about that in relationship to painting, mm -hmm. you know, your base colours might be the same. Yeah. But you can dress the base um, colour up with all these other wonderful things. <laughs> yeah. And a scarf so, is like a collage on top of the base, um, yeah. you know, underlayer. Isn't that exciting? I think that's really kind of interesting. And I do know, I have done, and I think this actually, it's just brought something to mind. Um, I, I, cause I have all these different sc um, scarves and some of them, the designs are absolutely beautiful and the colors are amazing. And I have used them in the past as prompts for painting. Okay, yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think that's a lovely way to experiment with your paint with your painting is, you know, if you've got something specifically that you really love. I mean, say, for example, I'm looking at your jumper now. Mm -hmm. I can see lo the lovely teal color and the it's kind of like a dark right, yeah. uh, wine color red. Yeah. yeah and, and then colors. the reds, yeah. you know, um, put those into a painting mm -hmm. wouldn't that be interesting you know the color palette that you have in a in in a piece of clothing that you really love yeah transform it into a painting transform well. it into a painting and vice versa and, you know why not the opposite as well well exactly yeah 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 yeah. So, um, yeah, it can, the, the, the mind can start going off in wonderful creative <laughs> ways when you start thinking about that. That's right. Actually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, you've got a red, a, a red shirt on underneath. So you had a red background, put a red background on your canvas mm -hmm. and then start building those other colors onto it. And suddenly you've got a really cool abstract painting. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this and you is can do of, loads with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, as you know, I, I love to knit, and so I I made this, and it's it's not actually you made it. Yeah, it's not actually a jumper. I won't. No point in showing you because people who are listening can't tell what I'm doing. But it's basically a rectangle of just plain right. knitted stitches, and I took all bits and pieces of yarn that I had left over. Yeah. And I just um, made, you know, just rows and rows of different um, and changing, changing colors and changing yarns all the way through. And then you, you sew together, you sew together so that you've got, you know, one long end attached to the other long end in a V shape. Yeah. And then you yeah. just, it's like a shawl, you just sort of drape it over your shoulder. Oh, okay. And it's lovely and warm and cozy. And I wear it all the time. And I think to myself, <laughs> oh, I should make more of these, but in different colors, yeah. just like you were saying, you know exploring yes. different um ideas about how to use color but in in so many different ways it's, nice. it's beautiful yeah yeah that's fantastic yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh well we're going off the subject a little bit but i i have also been experimenting with some of my paintings oh right yes of course yes. and decided that i would have it more you know put some of the designs on some things yes okay <laughs> so i i did this mug it's nice it's it says on it it says love art okay and um i designed it in canva mm -hmm. on you know the, the program and then um with a company called printify yeah um it's print on demand so I uploaded the image yeah. um, on that and you can put it on anything that you want. Right. So I've put it on the mug and I've also put it on an apron mm -hmm. and also on a T-shirt. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I thought, you know, it's, they're just really nice for presents and or present for yourself, really, to inspiration when you're painting to have your coffee in. <laughs> so is the background image your art or did you? Well, it's a combination because I did some sort of fiddling around on Canva and, okay. you know, over layered things and, you know, you can do what you like. It, 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 yeah. it, it's fun to, to experiment. And then I did the writing on right. Canva yeah. on, on, top on top of it, yeah. of the design. And then I put it in the right shape and then I uploaded it onto Printify who uploaded it onto a mug yeah. and sent it me, um, I got it yesterday. <laughs> 
That's so, um, so it's in your shop now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, one of the things I think we'll, we could talk about at another time because we're, we're talking about evolving as an artist, but I think to do this kind of thing with a painting that you really like mm -hmm. and to give you inspiration mm -hmm. um, and to extend your possibilities to do things like print on demand. Yes. Um, and it's free. It doesn't cost you anything to 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 do it. Um, you know, can can give you a lot of inspiration. If you have a nice t-shirt, you have a white t-shirt, put a design on the front of it of something that you've made. Yeah. That you've absolutely. created or yeah. painted. Yeah. You know, it inspires you, it gives you something extra because people are bound to say, Oh, you know, that's nice. Where did you get that from? Oh, I designed it myself. <laughs> well, it's really interesting that you say that because um, a friend of mine uh, just recently um, suggested to me exactly the same thing. I had sent him a photograph of one of my uh, one of my pieces, and he said he himself went into one of these you know print on demand um, online shops, and he took the image and he over overlaid it on top of a T-shirt. And he sent me, you know, a, an example of what it would look like. And it was so amazing because in the context of something on a t-shirt, it, mm. it kind of looked completely different. And I yeah. suddenly got this feeling of, oh, wow, that would be so cool to wear that. And, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that for Christmas presents from my my family. And, uh, well, and, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, so I've got I've got um, a couple of I've done I've done one or two designs. I haven't done many because mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to take up all my time doing it. But I, yeah. I did the, this design and I've done another one uh, saying art in progress. Which yeah, it's <laughs> kind of quite cool on a on, on an apron. And of course, I've also put my calendar there. Oh, right. And um, that looks really you know, the calendar is yeah. lovely again for Christmas presents. Absolutely. And uh, something, you know, individual and unique. And, you know, that's, I think, what we're all aiming for. You know, right. this whole thing about finding your own style that everybody seems obsessed about. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, here you go, guys. Yeah. <laughs> there isn't another one like this. That's there isn't another fine. painting like that. Yeah. yeah. You know, and if I think if you, if you you know, it, how would I say it positively? You know, selling paintings is is quite a, a, a deal. Mm. And, um, you know, you want to share your stuff, but it's difficult to, uh, we, you know, that's a whole subject on how to sell your art. Yeah. But say if you don't want to necessarily have an exhibition, but you'd like to share it, you know, this is an ideal, ideal. way. Absolutely. An it's ideal way idea. Yeah. of, 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 yeah. um, of yes. doing it. So, so it's a really nice way to um, show your art in a different kind of way, in a creative way. So, yeah, to go, go and have a look at what I've done. It's really cool. It's on my I website. Will. Yeah, that's at, um, joyfayartist.com. And um, you can see them. You can let me know what you think. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So going back to our subject of how we evolve, I think, um, you know, the other thing I think that's really um wonderful about painting is that and I we, we were talking again a little bit about this last week about how to use you know difficult situations when you're mm. in a crisis or a trauma or going through some emotional challenges um that you can um evolve your art again because other things will come out mm -hmm of your painting than than it than it would when you're just you know okay and happy and and doing right so um again when you look at master artists and then say you know we talk a lot about picasso and that guernica painting but that that was sort of quite transformative for him as well as for the viewer yeah you know yeah. it gave us a whole um something to think about and you know I feel somehow the purpose of art not just for the viewers but for us is for it to give us some feedback 
to, to it's it's kind of like a mirror to what's going on our feedback about about yourself to yourself yes mm. you know how how are we feeling about what we're what we're producing um with our painting mm. and i feel that you can connect that up um you know in such an interesting way so you know if you go and 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 that evolves you at the same time and you know even if it's just in your journal yeah to to be expressing yourself and from that expression i think we consistently grow we might not see it you know you don't see a child grow inch by inch no but you know from one week to another week to another week to another week they could have grown an inch or two mm -hmm. and certainly when <laughs> and, you don't and, see them for a while there you do notice a big difference yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly yeah. yeah so you know it, it, it's a progression and i feel that with our art it's also a progression so you know for those people who might feel um frustrated that they don't feel that their art is getting anywhere mm. you know take a breath because you have to process things and then it slowly starts coming out in your work yeah and give yourself the time and space to allow for that uh, transformation to happen and it may not happen very quickly you know for some people it could happen overnight mm. and for other people um, it might take, you know, months, years to yeah. grow and develop into, you know, something, I don't know, more your, again, that style question, you know, that, that mm. sort of um, thing that, that represents or that says, this is you, this is you coming out and it's recognizable as you. Yeah. Mm. And I think that the, 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 the way to increase that is to keep repeating the theme until you don't want to repeat it any longer <laughs> if you yeah. know what i mean yeah so, so to push it to right. push it to see what's yeah. what right you know um and again you know let's let, let's go back to masters mm -hmm. van gogh and his and his beautiful sunflowers he painted the sunflowers in many different ways he did lots of sunflower paintings yes at all stages at, at when they were just coming out and when they were in full bloom when they started dying mm -hmm. he did a whole series of stuff on on sunflowers so until he doesn't do sunflowers any longer, he moves on to something else. Yeah. <laughs> so that helps with evolving. How do you resist, each... How do you get over that uh, that feeling of boredom though from repeating a theme over and over again? I mean, it's it's a bit of a for me. I mean, I find I have a certain theme that comes through in my work. There's there's shapes and forms that just keep reappearing, you know, whether I want them to or not, they're always there. And so I almost like don't have control over it. It just emerges, you know, and, okay. um, and I, I've come to accept it and embrace it and go with it. But at the same time, there's part of me that resists and wants to do something completely different. And when mm -hmm. I force myself to do something completely different, I don't feel like things flow as well. So it's this, there's, there's sort of a bit of a, of a tension between um you know letting it kind of all come out the way it you, something in you wants it to come out and then mm. and then realizing that it's repetitive it's the same old same old same old colors same old shapes whatever and resisting that or or you know fighting against it and then and wanting to do something different do you know what i mean yeah i do yeah, yeah. well my suggestion for that is to um maybe initially add a color that you wouldn't normally add mm -hmm. okay so even if you're doing those shapes yeah then you know say you normally use i don't know pinks and purples just for the sake of it okay so you know maybe then um add a really deep red mm. that you wouldn't do normally okay which makes up anyway the purple 
Yeah. You know, you've got red in the purple and then maybe use a really deep blue. Mm. So you're staying within the palette. You're not going out of the box too much to gently ease yourself into something new. Yeah. Yeah. Using the, use the colors that you have differently. Okay. Yeah. So then maybe then with the shapes, um, you know, probably they all tend to come out the same size when you're doing that, because I know that feeling. Yeah. So <laughs> deliberately make one of them much smaller mm. and one of them much bigger. Bigger, yeah, yeah. And then maybe if you normally do them sort of um, vertically. Yeah. Do them um, horizontally. Do it horizontally or turn the painting. Or turn the painting, yeah. Right. So yeah. they're horizontally. And if it still comes out vertically, you'll have the vertical over the horizontal. <laughs> so, you, so you would have changed True. the perspective of it. Right. And slowly but surely, you start giving your brain those signals that even within the shape that you are, um, that, that, that there's that something is attached to, Yeah. you're making it, you, you're changing it subtly. So you're allowing it, it to evolve in in a, in its you're own allowing place. it absolutely exactly yeah yeah so you know then you you know you keep turning it around you might mm -hmm. even do it at an angle you know um and um expand one of the colors mm -hmm. or two of the colors or add you know the the a complementary color to it yeah or neutral maybe or a neutral yeah. or a gray or yeah. you know yeah. whatever yeah. so you're you're not forcing the issue mm. you're um exploring the issue gently nudging it in another direction yes <laughs> yeah. and and yeah. that that kind of starts the new evolution of something else yes yeah, because you might not find... as harsh it's not as drastic to yeah yeah i see what you yeah. mean yeah yeah yeah. yeah so, for important. example, if you were to draw, um, uh, what say a leaf, the leaf, a leaf shape, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you've got it horizontally. Sorry, you've got it vertically. If you turn it on its side and you do it over the top, um, vertically again. Another one. Yeah. So you've got one horizontal and one vertical. Where it's crossed over, you've got another shape. True. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So maybe what you might do is reiterate the shape the that you've got as it crosses over. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I can picture it in my head as you're saying it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll try that. Thank you. So you're you're slowly kind of moving out of what wants to be said, mm -hmm. and then. Maybe do some writing then, just a few sentences about how you feel about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, that 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 shape is a very symbolic shape. It you know, is. It's a lotus flower shape, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, it, and, and, and if we look at that, you know, as women, that's a very feminine shape. Yes, well, right. that's what everybody says my paintings look like. <laughs> yeah, so so yeah. what is it that that femininity is saying to you? Yeah. Well, when you start writing, you know, let this painting just say what it, what it, what it's wanting me to learn. From. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And asking yeah. asking that question, you know, suddenly, you know, you put the question in, boo, 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 you'll get the answer. Right. Yeah. And, and then you might say, how, how, how do I evolve from this? Mm -hmm. So you might just deliberately put a square in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> deliberately. Yeah. Just to yeah. kind of give you a, oh, what's that about? Yes. Yes. Introduce a whole new element. Yeah. A whole, whole new concept in there. Now, if you, if you were to look at Paul Clay's work. Mm hmm. And a lot of his work is very uh, geometric and he does a lot of squares in all different colors. And suddenly you'll find within that composition, a, a circle. Oh yes. Right. Right. Or a, a triangle. Suddenly something else will appear there. Pops in. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, perhaps try the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
last week we were talking about I, I I was showing you that thing on on peace and love peace and love peace yes. and love right yes. oh yeah so if you if you were to draw that specific design that you're talking about for example even if you did it small or you can do it you know big medium whatever if you just drew it over and over and over and over again yeah on a, on a piece of paper I mean it doesn't have to be a big piece of paper a5 or something and just keep doing it <laughs> and see what's coming up in your mind about that shape right yes that's true and see how it evolves as I draw it because perhaps yes. the shape might change as as you're you know working it down the page Exactly. Yeah. So instead of resisting it, mm. you're going with it. Right. The, the 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 forcing bit is about resistance. Mm -hmm. Right. You're mm -hmm. resisting something that would naturally happen. Yeah. But if you if you move towards what naturally naturally happens, and expand on it and explore it, something will change yeah naturally because it yeah. can't you know nothing can't ever stays it. the same Absolutely. yeah yeah so you you dive into it rather than try to avoid it and that actually relates to everything <laughs> well it's a very um i don't know if it's zen or taoist or i'm sure you know yeah. some ancient philosophy about even martial arts you know they talk about yeah working with you go energy. with it Go with it. Yeah. yeah. Divert, you know, it's like a diversion and a flow of what, what's coming towards you and, and turning it into something else. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, my, my, um, my professor always used to say to me, the way out is the way through mm. <laughs> that you can't find a way out unless you actually go in. <laughs> if you resist it yeah then you you you're causing more friction whereas if you go into it you find the way out you know you if you have a look at you know it always amazes me particularly here in spain because you know we go from you know having two or three days of rain and then it's beautifully sunny again and suddenly on the terrace you'll have shoots of weeds that have come up through the concrete. <laughs> and it always amazes me how this tiny little green uh, plant can push its way through concrete. <laughs> it's amazing. It's absolutely incredible. Yes. It's incredible yes. How, yeah. how nature works. So how nature works. We we are part of nature. How do we work? Yeah. <laughs> and... <laughs> I think we tend to, because of how we think or how we're trained to think, is we forget that we we can naturally do things. We naturally heal. Right. We naturally grow. We naturally move forward. And however much you would say, for example, as a baby, however much you might try and force a baby to walk, it will only walk when it's ready to walk. Right. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Right. Yeah. So, but we forget that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's educated out of us rather than educated into us. Mostly, most yeah. of us. Yeah. Not saying everybody, but you know, it it's very easy to lose touch with that natural intelligence that is is us. Our hearts beating, our lungs are working, our everything is moving without us giving it a second thought, even a first thought. Yeah. We're just being. I'm speaking. I'm not. I haven't got a process where I need to think about how I speak other than thinking about what I say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I want to think about what I say, but I don't have to think about how I speak. <laughs> you know, I don't know what makes, how I can make this sound, <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, of course. <laughs> you know, the mechanics of it are are completely yeah. unconscious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I don't know the mechanics of switching on the light. I can yeah. switch the light on, but I don't know how the, you know, I haven't done the wiring in the house to understand how the, you know, how the whole thing works. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we forget that. Mm -hmm. I think the tendency is to 
have this strange idea that we have to work at things in in a way that actually stops us from evolving into things yeah you know if we allow things to happen rather than spend hours trying to think about how it happens you know you want we want to be that we want to have the light bulb effect well is it a matter of wanting an instantaneous um result you know and not allowing for the process as we were talking about earlier which Mm. can take time you know it can take whatever time it takes, like a child learning how to walk, you know, it, it yeah. will walk when it's ready to. And um, it, some children walk at like my daughters, my twins, they were running at nine months old um, as Ooh. compared to my eldest daughter who only started walking at 13 months old. You mm -hmm. know, why? I don't know. It's just their no. genetics and all the rest of it is completely different. Yeah. And they're, they're, you know, from the same gene pool, so, <laughs> you know, um, and and we can adapt the same idea to our painting. Yeah, you yeah. know, um, start you know sitting up and then begin to crawl and then yeah. lift yourself up and then start to walk and then learn to run, and it takes a bit of time, and then we once we get to that point we can start developing skills that will help us on the way right yeah so what do you think about I was talking to my to a very good friend of mine she's also an artist and we were talking about um having a you know starting paintings and not finishing them and I'm sure you know we all, we've all done that I certainly am mm -hmm. that's one of my big you know things that I struggle with and she was saying that she feels that if she doesn't finish a painting from you know within a day or so She's never going to, mm -hmm. you know, she puts it aside. That's it. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's gone. It's forgotten. It might be a good learning experience, but she's never gone back and finished something that she started, you know, mm -hmm. five years ago, 10 years ago or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know whether or not, you know, is that just part of the learning process and accepting that there are some things that, you know, are no longer part of our learning anymore. We've gone, we've moved on to something else and mm. there's no going back in a way. You know what I mean? Or I don't know, what do you think about? Um, well, I, I think I think one has to kind of look at the, the definition of finished. Yes, true. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, it might be that, that that piece has finished there. Yeah, yeah. You know who who's putting who's putting the label on finished or not finished? It Herself. it might be that 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 she could do more to it yeah. if she wanted to. Yeah. But actually, what she's done, or what we do in the same situation, um, we've done what we wanted to do, and now it's time to move on to something else. Right. And it might be that we move on to something else with a different piece of paper or a different canvas. There's nothing to stop us moving on to something else on the same painting. True. Um, yeah. And I I do that myself you. quite a lot. Yeah. You yeah. know, I I I I live with something for a while, and then I think, oh, I want to change this now. Mm. So so the idea of finished, you know, it begs a question, because it, the finished idea is an idea in our own mind. Very true. You know. Yeah. Somebody can just do well. Uh, look at let's have a think who I might be thinking about Matisse you know you might just do a quick line drawing and you could say that's a sketch yeah it's not finished he, you know why didn't he do this with it why didn't he do that with it well it's valuable in itself as the drawing <laughs> yeah like it's a step along the way isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. And, and actually it's a really good discipline to do that it's a very good discipline that if you just gave yourself literally um, two minutes or a minute just to do something and then go on to the next thing and mm. just do something. Now, are they finished? Are they in progress? No, they're just what they are. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I don't I, I, I'm, I think one has to reevaluate what finish means <laughs> yes. that it's part of the process it's part of our evolution mm. because even if you've 
you know, one would say I could do more with that. Yeah, I could do more. Um, this little painting behind me here, mm -hmm. um, I've taken it so far. I want to do more with it. I could leave it as it is because it's quite pretty as it is, but I want to do more with it. Yeah. So um, it could be finished. Somebody might say, oh, don't do anything else with it. And somebody might say, oh, yeah, you need to do loads more to that. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's how I feel. How you about feel. It. Right. Yes. And I, I think, again, you know, that's part of our evolution. What she might find is in two or three years time, if she's kept all her pile of stuff, she yeah. might go back and have a look through it and say, you know what? I really like that as it is. Or she might say, oh, that gives me an idea to do something else on top of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't feel that we should restrict ourselves with these um, strange kind of perceptions of what we think we should, must and ought do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it all comes down to at what point do you take it out of, um, you know, the corner of your studio and hang it on the wall and say, OK, I'm yeah. ready to put that up on the wall or whatever, you know, yeah. put it on a mug <laughs> or put it on a mug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but, you know, sometimes less is more. Mm. Sometimes it, it, it it's only what we think we see. And and I I think that, you know, we were talking a lot last time about seeing and looking look at it in different ways turn it upside down yeah look at it through a mirror have a look at it not as something you're attached to that you've done but something that has just been created actually, actually by you yeah but it could have been created by anybody <laughs> yeah just yeah. have a look at it with a different mindset right and and see what it, what it throws up to you. I was I was listening to someone talk about the difference between perception and perspective and how important it is that um you know the way that we see things including our own art and other people's art um is mm -hmm. um is through our perception you know how do we interpret it what colors do we see what shapes do we see what I see in your painting is probably very different from what you see in your painting, what someone else sees in your painting. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if I try to take it, if I try to step into your shoes and see the painting from your point of view, um, then, I, then I'm changing my perspective. You know, I'm looking at it from where you're standing, sort of figuratively speaking and saying, oh, okay, if you maybe, you know, if you explain to me a little bit I was thinking about this when I painted it, or I was feeling this way, or I had just experienced mm. this life event, and this is what I painted. And then you can sort of, you can kind of empathize and you can go into that person's experience a little bit from their perspective and mm. see it differently than maybe the way you did, you know, just coming out of your experience. Yeah. So it's it's an interesting exercise. It is, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and I, I feel that, you know, just... Uh, what would be the word that comes up into my mind? To be non-judgmental mm. of anything that you do. Right, yeah. I think just to be curious and intrigued with your own creativity. <laughs> <laughs> because as soon as we get to judgmental, we block that creativity. Yeah. Who's to say it's good or bad or this or that okay I would agree that if you've done a piece and you feel that you could do something more with it maybe then that is the time to look at maybe changing something um, a little bit to add to the composition or to a focal point so you might intensify a color in an area to have a better contrast or to let your eye move round a painting, then you're, you're making those adjustments because you recognize that it needs some more depth in it. Yeah, It's yeah. not a forced thing, it's just looking. When I'm looking at something, is am I seeing something bland? 
So it's all the same color contrast. Mm. So I could say, yeah, I am. Okay, so how can I make it more interesting? <laughs> so I can make it more interesting by in by making a variation of the color value. Mm -hmm. Right, we were going back to what we were talking about before about clothes. So I've got a plain black jumper on right now. Yeah. Now, um, and a, a white t-shirt. Now I could change my whole look by putting a, a pink scarf on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, okay. Absolutely. I haven't changed it fundamentally. I've just changed the perspective. It's still mm. a black jumper and a white t-shirt with a pink with with a pink with a with a flash of color <laughs> right so in your painting do you feel that it's it needs a flash of something yeah some sort of a statement yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it needs a focal point right and that goes with anything whether it's your clothes whether it's your interior design you know by putting a suddenly a, a beautiful cushion Mm -hmm. on a on a neutral color sofa you've lifted the whole thing right absolutely yeah and and so your eye will go oh that's a nice surprise yes and yeah. and it's the same thing with with your painting yeah can you put yeah. a nice surprise in it and if you can't at the moment if you can't feel where it might go then leave it for the time being and maybe look at it later. Maybe it doesn't want a nice surprise in it. Maybe it is as it is. <laughs> yeah, or start looking at other artwork that, um, yeah, you know, that might suddenly inspire you, and you'll see something in someone else's art, and you'll think, oh wow, that is oh, really, yeah. I love that. Yeah. You know, I yeah. think we got too. Yeah, and that uh, that it, again is evolving our art. Yeah, because number one, we're recognizing that it might need. Um, that flash of yeah. something yeah. yeah and then we go and seek out how other people have created flashes in yeah. their painting. <laughs> yeah. and so we we're constantly growing and evolving right I feel that at each at every stage to to embrace what we've done and not be judgmental I hear it so often and it really upsets me how many people say, oh, I don't like my work. Oh, I can't do this. And oh, I don't know how to do the other. And oh, this is awful. And, uh, you know, why say that? Why not just say, well, at the moment, I'm still crawling. I'm not walking yet. Yeah. And I'm learning how. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't expect to run tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I remember that a lot when I was, you know, teaching in person, you know, you'd have, especially new people, mm. you know, the first thing that they would say is, oh, I can't draw or I can't paint. Yeah. You know, the first thing, I mean, no, okay, well, you ha you can draw and you can paint because you used to do a lot of it when you were little. Right. You just haven't done it recently. So let let's explore. Yeah. So let's not put can't in. Let's just say I haven't done it for a while. <laughs> yeah, and language is so important, isn't it? Um, you know, while you were saying that, I was realizing yeah. how how we speak to ourselves and how we give ourselves these these messages about the mm. lim our own limitations. And of course, you know, you are going to operate according to the box that you create for yourself. For That's yourself, for yeah, yeah. There was an exercise I used to, I used to do, and I think I did it in one of my workshops actually a while ago. When people say I can't draw, I can't draw, blah blah blah. Okay, so um, the book that I used to use a lot with teaching, as you know, is the Betty Edwards Drawing yeah. on the Right Side of Your Brain, and you know I still think that's the best book ever for learning to draw, and. So what I would do, that there's an exercise there where you give somebody a picture. It's actually a picture by Picasso of an old man sitting in a chair. So if you were to look at that old man sitting in a chair picture, <laughs> oh, I can't possibly draw that. So mm -hmm. what I would do is I would not show them the picture and say, right, I would put the picture upside down, put a piece of paper 
on the top of it so they can't see it yeah and I would say right I want you to slide the picture down and draw the lines that you see oh I as see. you're as you're sliding the picture yeah yeah right? this is it's not my invention this is Betty Edwards invention mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and they seriously wouldn't know what it was that they were drawing they would just be drawing the lines that they see as they slide the paper down the page. Yeah. And, you know, they do it and it's upside down, remember? So yeah. <laughs> they'd actually be drawing the the legs of the chair and the the, the spindles on it and the, and the foot. But they don't know that that's what they're drawing. Anyway, it would take them about sort of 20 minutes to do this thing. And then they would finish it. And I say, right, turn it the right way around. And there they've drawn the old man in the chair. Oh. Right? <clears throat> right? They'd be mind blown. Yeah. How did I do that? I said, yeah. okay, all you did was follow the line. Yeah. And you didn't have a perception of what you thought it was. Because it's the perception of what you think it is that stops you from doing it because you don't think that you can do it. Yes. But yes. you've just proved that you can. Yeah. <laughs> you've just yeah. done it in an upside down way, literally. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a fantastic um, confidence boost. Mm -hmm. And it cuts into this whole nonsense of I can't draw. It does. It does. Absolutely. Yeah. It, yeah. It's a wonderful exercise. I've done it myself a uh, long, long time ago, but it, it bears repeating. It absolutely does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and then you could do that with anything. Mm -hmm. You could do it with anything. If you think you can't draw this, that and the other, turn it upside down, put a piece of paper over the top of it and just draw the lines that you see as you slide the paper down. Yeah. Because your, your right, your left brain can't say oh you can't do that <laughs> you don't know how to draw a table to do that i don't yeah. know how to do that. yeah 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 it's this the creative side says oh that's okay i can draw a line and i can draw another line and i can draw a horizontal line i can draw a vertical line i can do a curve and it goes off on its own sweet way <laughs> and then the, you know the left brain says oh my god <laughs> yeah 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 i know i know, you know? It's incredible I, I remember another exercise I did, and I can't remember all the details of it, but basically it was a way of showing you that you are automatically putting things inside of a box without realizing it. So trying to connect yeah. some dots in a certain way, and there was a box, the shape of a square sort of superimposed over it. And people, mm -hmm. you know, you just instinctively struggle to keep the lines inside the box, inside the square. <laughs> and you don't want to go outside of the lines. And I think this is a lot of what we all struggle with is drawing, mm -hmm. you know, when you're learning to color as a child, you know, don't color outside the lines. Well, why not, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah, I can never do that. You know, when you have to fill in these forms and they give you these tiny little boxes. Oh, yeah, right. You have to fill in your telephone number or your email address yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I can never do it, ever. I, I, <laughs> I, I stopped trying. I think, oh, God. God. You know, yeah. I have to have like three forms before I can fill it in properly because I don't write it, I can't, you know, I'll run out of space. Well, with my name, imagine, you know, they give yes. me 10 boxes. There's no way I can fit my name into 10 boxes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. so yeah so um going back to evolving as an artist to you know have a conclusion to this interesting conversation um allow yourself to be i think comes to, into my mind allow allow yourself to explore your own creativity without interfering with it mm -hmm. And if you keep coming up with a similar thing, like you were saying, yeah. then find different ways that you can, can change it gradually. And gradually you'll move on to the next thing and to the next thing and to the next thing. And then, you know, maybe the next thing you find your yourself repeating over and over and over again. Yeah. Or do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So, find subtle ways of changing that and you know it's good to be inspired by other artists it's fantastic to go and have a look at you know many of the YouTube 
videos of what people are doing you know you can you can become a youtube addict actually yeah Yeah. um i think you know gain inspiration from 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 them but try not to be what's the word um how, how would you say it um don't feel inferior Oh, that they're doing yeah, this right. and you're not doing that, or they yeah. can do this and you can't, or or, or copying what they do. I mean, yeah. yeah, I would say copy what they do in order to learn something. Yes. And then interpret it yourself. But it can be, you know, you can get quite despondent. You can, you know, you get on this kind of, I've got to learn a bit more. Oh, I've got to learn a bit more. Oh, I've got to watch another video because I've got to know how to do this, that and the other. And how do I, and it can go on and on and on and on. And you lose, you lose connection with what you bring to the table. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, um, I mean, you can't maybe see it, but behind me, I started this rather interesting project over the weekend I thought because I watched a YouTube video of somebody doing something which I thought was really cool um they Mm. were basically gluing um string onto a canvas in different shapes you know and using just the lines and whatever in some random way Mm. and then they put tissue paper on top of it and then they painted on top of that and I thought oh that is such an interesting thing so I try I've decided Mm. to try it and trying not to be you know copying them I'm not copying them I'm doing it my own way but it's an exploration and it's a it's a let's see what happens kind of an exercise and mixing Mm. media as well you know I'm using alcohol inks and um, I'm going to try putting some acrylic paint on it and putting one on top of the other and see what happens maybe it doesn't work I don't know I'll find out (laughs) Mm. yeah yeah, but it's fun brilliant I mean you know you can use it obviously you know we're free to do whatever we want to do yeah I just feel that sometimes you can go on thinking you've got to learn more you've got to learn more you've got to learn more without actually just doing yeah well true (laughs) just exploring you know um I mean yes we're all influenced and I think it's great to be influenced by um, you know, observing what other artists do. There's nothing quite like going into a museum or an art gallery. Yeah, definitely. And being inspired yes, by what yes. you see. And, you know, in the olden days, in you know, we used to go actually into the museum and sit there and, and copy some of the masters. True, yes. <laughs> Just yes. to see what they how they do it, um, to develop skills, to be able to then go away and do our, our own thing. So it's perfectly natural. Mm-hmm. But not to lose sight of what you can do yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you have to add yourself to it. I mean, I think it, there's no avoiding yeah. it, is there, in a way? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I think, um, let me just have a look. How, this, I've got from writing some notes. Yeah, I think, you know, we've covered it in, in, in quite an interesting way to come back to feeling that we we develop over time and not to get frustrated that, you know, we're not um <laughs> we're not Van Gogh's and and Monet's and you know Cezanne overnight. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, it's not a it's not a journey with a destination in a way, is it? No, it's not. It's yeah. you're right. That's a really good way of, of of saying it. It's it's an exploration. It's like life. I mean, you know, for heaven's sake, the destination is death. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ultimately. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, are we going to focus on that, or are we going to focus on what we can do between now and then? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, that was a conversation I was having with somebody (laughs) yesterday. You know, the older you get, the nearer that end is. Yes. And therefore, you you know, how do you feel about that? How do I feel about that? You know, when when we were in our 20s and 30s and 40s, you know, we all set goals and we were striving for this and striving for that. We'll do this by, you know, next five years. Well, it kind of changes. It does. Once you get to yeah Uh, my ripe old age (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, I, I can say set a, a challenge for myself for five years, but it's different. It's totally different. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, in, in the past, I used to teach about goal setting and I, I couldn't teach the same thing now at this yeah. age on goal setting as I could then to right. that audience. Yes. You know, I think once you hit 60, 70, the goal thing changes. And I feel the wonderful thing I think happens as you as you get to our age is that we we can lose inhibitions we can basically say look i don't care right, <laughs> what yeah. people think about me any longer i'm not kind of having to sort of dress to impress and to have all this blah 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 i'm allowed to just be who i am yes and yes. finally everyone finally, finally yeah, yeah yeah you can just rise to the surface of yourself and yeah. say okay you know i've got maybe 10 years left or 20 years left and that's a long space of time but it goes like the wind <laughs> so every day so counts let, yeah make the yeah, most let's of it. just be as creative as we possibly can be and explore as many things as we can yeah you know put ourselves on our own bucket list of what can I find out about me <laughs> and wear purple hats <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> and yellow <laughs> socks yeah yeah dresses dress as colorfully as your painting yeah. because you want your painting yeah. to be. <laughs> one of my idols for clothes is vivian westwood because i just you know that bright red hair and her crazy clothes and she's just like out there and yeah. i love that yeah you know, i'd love yeah. to have the balls to be able to be as out there as she is. yeah i know what you mean yeah i'm not quite i'm not quite there yet myself but i'm not quite there yet. yet yeah <laughs> <laughs> i might just get a purple wig or a red wig just for the hell of it so well you know if i'm on the podcast Halloween. next week with yeah, red I was day, say, you know yeah go, go out <laughs> go out walking around in your purple hat with your red wig on and, yeah. and see See what happens. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I might just do that. <laughs> God, I wish I was there. We could do it together. It would be so yes. much fun. <laughs> I shall order one on Amazon. A red wig or a purple wig or an orange wig. Wow. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I and see, see how that would change us. Can you imagine? You know, putting that on and changing your whole identity, you know, for something. How would you paint? Actually, that's a really <laughs> great idea. Why don't we get dressed up in some crazy costume to paint and imagine that you're somebody else, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's yeah. a really neat idea. I think thing that, that think. would be a cool idea. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this space, guys. Yeah, right. Next video, <laughs> you're going to see us look completely different. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, well, great to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, lovely to talk to you too, Joy. And uh, well, fun conversation. And please, anybody, we, you know, not many people leave comments. I don't understand why. So please leave a comment. It would be really cool because it's lovely to read them. Yeah. And um, obviously, uh, like the video if you did. And if you want more of the same of this crazy conversation, then <laughs> notification <Yeah>. button. <laughs> But, you know, do leave a comment. It's lovely to just say, you know, you enjoyed it or what a load of rubbish or right. something. Anything, anything at all. Yeah. <laughs> anything would anything. be kind of cool. Yeah. But just, a, a, you know, the feedback is is really, is, is lovely for us to yes, have. Yes, definitely. And um, it's great to read the comments. And, you know, I'll always reply. Always, I'll always put something in. So that would be fantastic. So... Next Monday, same again with yes, another interesting subject. So yeah, we, right. we bring the podcast out every week. So um, fantastic. So I hope right. everyone has a good week. Hope you have a good week. Same Eve. to you, dear. Thanks very much. Take care. Yeah. And all the information and websites and mugs. <laughs> yeah. All that information is in the description below. So cool. Great. Bye for now. Bye. Take Have care. Bye. Bye.